imagine you are 28 years old. Your life is not your own. You are owned. Someone controls you. They tell you what you're going to do and where you're going to go. They tell you when you're going to eat and what you're going to eat. They tell you when you're going to sleep. You do not choose this. You are trapped. How trapped are you? Well, last month, your trafficker put you on a plane to Las Vegas. He told you to work a convention of men. You gathered up the money. You wired it back to him. And then you got on that plane and returned to him. Why would you do that? Well, he let you know that. I've got people watching you. And if you try to take my money, I'm going to kill you. Your life is being consumed physically, emotionally, and spiritually, turning tricks for your trafficker. You are threatened and beaten by your trafficker because he owns you and you maybe didn't make enough money for him that night. You are raped and bruised by the consumer because he paid for you and he should be able to do as he pleases. This is all you've known for many, many years because you were 13 years old when this attractive man approached you and you thought he would rescue you from the home you were running away from. You thought he would really help you out and he promised you so many wonderful things. Now, if you could escape his grip, what would you do? Where would you go? You have no money, very little skills or education. You're struggling with PTSD from all the trauma that you've experienced, not to mention the depression and the anxiety that is plaguing you. How would you get a job? How would you fill out an application? And then there's that question of, where have you been previously employed? What would you put on that line? It's really a difficult situation for victims. Your addiction, your lack of skills and ability to be able to take care of yourself. And then the criminal record, you know they're going to find out about that. At least with your addiction, your trafficker helps to feed that for you. You feel like dirt, and you know everyone looks at you this way. There are 20 to 30 million slaves in our world today. Those are the estimates. And they're saying that 80% of them are sex trafficked and 19% are labor trafficked. Sex trafficking and exploitation is a huge problem in our country. In the United States, the estimate is that we know that 12 to 14 years of age is the average entry into this life. We know that 1.6 to 2.8 million is the estimates that they find that they're finding are the number of young people that are running away from their homes. And we know that within 36 to 48 hours, someone is looking to exploit them. Sex trafficking and exploitation is a huge problem in Minnesota. 14 to 20 percent of the young people that are homeless Studies have shown that they've participated in survival sex. What is survival sex? Well, when we talk about sexual exploitation, that's a victim and that's a buyer. When we talk about sex trafficking, there's a victim, a buyer, and a trafficker. So survival sex is trading sex for anything of value, whether that's food, shelter, or money, or even drugs. Sex trafficking is a huge problem in our communities. A pimp with a stable of three women or girls can make upwards to $547,000 in a year. It's happening all around us, but people just don't often want to admit or realize that it is a prevalent societal problem. One of the officers working Cases here in this community said, I have seen cases of sex trafficking, prostitution in every hotel in the greater St. Cloud area. I think we all can agree that every human being is deserving of a life where they are free to pursue their dreams, 
their interests, their talents, their God-given gifts and abilities. To really experience healthy relationships and successes in their life. But when you're a victim of sex trafficking and exploitation, it's hard for you to even comprehend having that type of life, to experience that goodness. Yet, what you're being forced to do seems so normalized in our society. Like, it's okay for you to live like this. The consumers are regular family men, professionals, coaches, teachers, people in positions of power, people who have significant others and children of their own. Society all around us tells it's, it's okay. Boys will be boys. Adult entertainment, strip clubs, pornography is so prevalent and, e and very addicting and easily accessed. And we're told it's harming no one. That woman in the video, she's smiling, isn't she? She must like it. Our advertisements, our movie industry say that women are sexual objects and that it's okay and even liberating. In a study done by Perriott of health experiences of women in the Twin Cities, women were able to describe that they had been asked by their buyer to imitate sexual acts that they have seen in pornographic videos. The truth is really very ugly. Lives are being broken and destroyed. And if the victims do not get a chance to heal and be set free, they are more, most likely going to experience an early death. A death of disease, suicide, homicide, or even drug overdose. Families are being broken apart from porn addictions, lies, and deceit. Our children are being stalked on social media platforms where perpetrators are looking for their next victim. Victims of sex trafficking and exploitation are dying daily, and few take note of this. We are all consumers, but when is our consumption destructive to others? Are you a giver or a taker? Do you perpetuate the notion that boys will be boys and celebrate becoming a man by visiting the strip clubs where trafficking and exploitation is going on? Are we consumers of pornography, outwardly joking with our friends about it, or secretly, inwardly, knowing that addiction is consuming us just as it is the women who are being brutalized in the videos? Or do you just hear the guys talking derogatory about women and stand by and say nothing? We can all agree that everyone deserves a life of freedom and health, an opportunity to experience and to go after their dreams. Are you a consumer, a taker, impacting lives with harm? Or are you a giver, creating opportunities for life for those to be able to li live that free life? What does it take for a victim to become a survivor? Well, at Terebinth Refuge, where I work, we are providing hope and healing to women, moving them from bondage to life of freedom, health, stability, and independence. How do we do that? We use two programs, there's shelter and transition. With shelter, that's short term. We know that these women are gonna come and go because it's gonna take them a long time to trust, to know that we really will do what we say we're gonna do, and then to be able to break that bond from their trafficker. But once they've gotten to that point where they feel they can really move forward in their life, then they move into transition. And in transition and in shelter, we are providing opportunities. And how we frame that is a holistic healing. That's body, mind, soul, and spirit. We believe in being trauma-informed in all of our practices so that we do not provide further harm. We know that it is vital to have survivor staff as integral parts of the programming. There's nothing like a survivor walking alongside a woman who can, she can truly understand this person knows what I've gone through, and yet she's made it out. Holistic healing is important because we know that without that holistic healing, 
more than likely, this, this victim is going to end up going back into the life. How we frame that is physical, body health, opportunities to get physically cared for, to learn about healthy nutrition, to learn about how exercise can impact their lives. Mind health, all of the trauma, all of the mental health issues that come along with this life, they need to have trauma therapy, and that's a key and integral part of that for them. We also have groups that teach how to have healthy relationships and what healthy boundaries are. Soul health. I describe that as that unique individual piece that we all have that is God-given. And everyone should get an opportunity to discover who that is and who they are meant to be. And so we provide opportunities for women to learn about themselves through education, through independent living skills, through job training, and also through recreation and leisure. And then spirit health. We believe that everyone has that God-shaped hole within them and that desire and need to find out who God is for them without force or coercion. We respect the dignity of all and we want everyone to be able to discover who God is for them in their life. What can you do? How can you give victims a chance for life? Be mindful of what you consume. Be honest with yourself about the ramifications. Talk to your guy friends about not using their money to perpetuate exploitation by going to the strip clubs, by buying pornography, or by buying sex. Commit to saying something when you hear your friends talking derogatory about women, but they just don't understand. Teach our little boys about respecting themselves and others that they have a choice, that they don't need to be just consumers. Teach our little girls they are more than just body parts, that they deserve dignity and respect. Learn more about sex trafficking and exploitation, and be ready to teach that to your friends. Help them to understand these victims and are people that really did not choose this, and that giving them compassion and understanding. No, this isn't something they choose, but have been led to and groomed into. Participate in systems to help. Share your talents, expertise, and resources with programs such as Terebinth Refuge or other programs that are helping these victims. Have and demonstrate compassion to survivors. They are fighting such an uphill battle against all of the trauma and the experiences they've had to endure and the stigma and the shame. Do you have an entry-level position that a woman could be trained into? Can you assist with a vehicle or maintenance? Do you have other resources that will assist a survivor to get on her feet? We all can be, we all are can be givers in big ways, and in small ways, but in whatever way it is vitally important to the victims of sex trafficking and exploitation, being a giver is saving lives. Thank you.